Hello and welcome to this uh, week's Focus on Geothermal Energy for the Weekend webinar. My name is Alexander Richter, uh, the founder of Think Geo Energy, and I'm presenting here today with uh, the, this webinar, a partnership of Think Geo Energy and EnerChange. Uh, and with me today is Kai Immelauer, partner at the German consultancy Rödel & Partner, who's leading a consultant team for investments in renewable energy technology in Germany and abroad. Uh, and has been one of the leads uh, for the geothermal risk mitigation facility for East Africa, KFW uh, initiative. Uh, and he will present today some of the results and lessons learned from the facility and uh, some insights on the recent uh, direct use program uh, launched. Uh, you have pos the possibility to ask questions uh, in the dashboard of this webinar. Uh, after uh, Kai's presentation, uh, I will, will be going through these questions as far as we can <clears throat> with the time that we have uh, to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, and with that, the floor is you, Kai. Yeah, thank you, Alex, for the introduction. So, um, warm welcome to this webinar. Thank you also to Think Geo Energy and, of course, EnerChange to organize uh, these, these webinars. I think a really great opportunity to bring all the geothermal community together. And so we will speak about uh, East Africa this afternoon. Um, and I hope I can give you some insights or inform you in general uh, about this uh, program, which now is running uh, more than 10 years almost. So it's uh, probably one of the, the oldest uh, geothermal risk mitigation facilities. And uh, yeah, so I just jump in into the particular issue. Um, so first of all, uh, very shortly, yeah, about me, I think uh, Alex summarized that already, kind of enthusiast for renewable energies, so working as advisor in this field and also including geothermal, geothermal power and heat uh, for yet yeah, now already more than 20 years and uh, also with the same company, Redland Partner. So shortly about Redland Partner, so we're an international professional service company, as you can see, with legal tax, auditing, management, consulting, so not coming from a geotechnical or engineering background, but really looking at the paragraphs and uh, the money flows, the figures, et cetera. And uh, yeah, we're worldwide in 50 countries and uh, now already summing up to 5,800 employees. So in these GSOM projects, we definitely usually deal always with the financing, with money, with cash flow modeling, uh, with uh, legal aspects. And uh, of course, uh, are active as you can see here in, in several markets worldwide. Um, why we are doing uh, GRMF or this geothermal risk mitigation facility really comes also from the background. We created a little bit this idea uh, quite a time ago. And as you can see on this slide, we worked in Germany and are currently also working uh, for the government to develop a system for Germany um, together with the Fraunhofer Institute. Uh, we work for the EU, um, East Africa, Latin America, the maybe also known GDF also, the concept was uh, developed by us uh, and we supported also the World Bank as well as the KFW in Indonesia where they also were popping up this idea to have a public instrument for this particular explorational risk phase at the beginning, which of course uh, still probably and it will ever be, it will never disappear because risks uh, never disappear but will, will uh, be an, um, one of the main various obstacles probably for geothermal investment. For GRMF, um, uh, we, we do the complete fund management. I will speak about that then later on about the setup and the details. So there we are really kind of, uh, yeah, have it on the every days, every day um, the, on our desk, let's say the problem and challenges of the, of the geothermal projects, in this case, of course, East Africa and uh, which are pretty much probably similar to other continents, but always probably said Africa is uh, quite special in certain issues. And I, I hope that I just can sum up all these particular issues and uh, give you a certain insight here. GMF, let's jump in. Um, well, the, the geothermal um, risk mitigation facility in East Africa um, is hosted by the African Union Commission uh, within the Department of Infrastructure and Energy there, they created a particular um, coordination unit. It's called RGCU, or Regional Geothermal Coordination Unit, within this Department of Infrastructure and Energy. 
and uh, so this is the host of the program this is also quite was quite a yeah, pioneering way let's say to take such a large political institution um, in the continent but of course the African Union is connected to all very well connected to all um, first of all yeah, countries of, of the African continent and as well to the particular ministries we, we what from time to time of course is also an advantage the reason for the program uh, at that time was that yeah you see the the estimates this is a number of figure always flying around like a cheese summer resource potential of 15,000 megawatts uh, electric and so uh, it is quite obvious that such a potential should be untapped uh, and this was exactly where our way started 10 years ago so the objective of this financing program was um, definitely to improve the regional power generation um, we have still stru countries struggling with that or still kind of uh, depending uh, even up to 100 percent on fossil fuels like for example Djibouti um, to reduce CO2 emissions because in that way of course it would be a perfect match we have the great advantage of geothermal to being baseload um, to bring in even further advantages of geothermal energy for example like direct use I will speak about that later on because this is now really a completely new approach that we did uh, and realized during the last years improves the security of energy supply uh, reduce the frequency and severity of energy price fluctuation blackouts because i mean it's not depending on any fossil fuel it's a world market um, situations and uh, yeah just adding low cost power generating capacity of christie's africa and uh, if there is energy there is uh, development and at the beginning there's always energy like another phrase says so this was exactly the objective here. Um, so it was uh, finally implemented in 2012. Um, it's a grant-based program. I will get in that later. So when we created the concept also for, for this GMF East Africa program, the basic idea was that there was no market. So what we took into consideration at the time was to say, okay, as far a uh, market is developed as complicated, let's say, a program could be designed. You can see that also for the GDF in, in Latin America, where there is a revolving aspect so that uh, successful projects have to kind of repay a certain, certain amount of money. But here, staying with East Africa, it was not the case. Why? Because we had a totally immature market. We were not sure at that time how many projects could pop up, how many surface study, how many feasibility studies will take place and, and or simple how much um yeah how shall i say movement momentum we can we can create so that this market starts living and at that time of course we had the projects in kenya well known the menengai field alcaria etc but all the other countries were rather underdeveloped considering now the chisama market in in general it's uh, 12 east african countries and we have uh, conducted already seven application rounds for GMF power and one application round now for GMF heat. You can see all, also all the countries we are working in and we're quite happy. It's not all countries already that uh, could uh, favor now from, from money from our pot of money, let's say, but, uh, but the, the majority already received funding for projects. So, right, jumping in, uh, because this is always quite interesting, I think, to you. So, what, what happened? What, what we could achieve, let's say, over the last um, 10 years? And you see here, um, we call that the project pipeline. So, these are the projects that now kind of are in a different status, of course. And you see that from the first application round to the seventh application round. And uh, with a circle, it's the drilling programs and with the, with their, um, Square, it's a, it's a the surface studies. You can see that there is, they are following, I will show, show that later, that they follow, of course, also the eastern branch of the Eastern African Rift. For the geologist, I've got another slide. But the, the main thing is because there's always the question no, not all projects have been realized. Yeah. Uh, so we have 21 drilling programs, 19 surface uh, studies. So these are projects that got into the project pipeline. That means that they, received the awarding letter after our in, in within our application process i will point it out later 
And if they receive their water letter, they are for us in the project pipeline. That means they are before grant contract negotiation. Um, we so far in these 10 years, we have realized uh, four uh, touring programs that uh, have been finished. Uh, and there are some more now really on the way. So I'm pretty close to, to spot in. And I think it's about uh, seven surface study that also have been finished already and others are right now already in operation, let's say, in, in working it out. But I think in general, we can say that the attention of course was drawn now to these uh, geothermal possibilities, first of all, and we see these projects there. I will speak later on a little bit why these projects really um, are still stuck and why, of course, the perfect idea um, when we started with the program was that we have, let's say, one application round and these projects will be selected and then get into a realization phase. And after, let's say, two years or something, uh, everything will be fine. Uh, funds uh, are out and the projects are hopefully successful. But this is definitely not the case and it's not possible in this particular investment environment that we see in, in Eastern Africa. But uh, as you can see, I mean, we didn't stop. We just said, okay, we have another chance. We have another chance. And we get, always saw new players on the market uh, that, that came in with project ideas. And this year uh, had to be all really heading for power generation. So this is a kind of uh, focus, of course, on the high NSLP resources um, that, we, that we have in East Africa and uh, not the, the, the heat ones, the direct use ones. Um, what was quite interesting, so this is just now another map that uh, we really can see, so for the geologists now listening, we really could see of, and with what of course is quite logical that these projects just uh, showed up exactly where the rift structures are. So you can see here the Eastern branch, which uh, definitely shows uh, high enthalpy um, resources. And you can see the Western branch with a low to, to medium enthalpy project and there that were allocated. So on the Western branch, sometimes uh, with binary cycles uh, in the project uh, idea in the Eastern Rift, they are all direct um, flash systems or whatever. So um, this is, let's say a little bit the, the current status. Um, we could not yet contribute, but uh, I always show because maybe it's not not everybody is aware of that, how, how good is Kenya doing also um, regarding geothermal. So this is our figure from the African Energy Portal when you see um, they are pretty close to 100% renewables with 94% and uh, their contributes uh, geothermal uh, with 44%, what is really, really a great development in Kenya. They're speaking even already that they have a surplus uh, of power and uh, I, I heard already now that the first with this power, there will be new business models, business cases coming up. So first, um, at least hydrogen production ideas, projects were already mentioned, where, for example, ammonium uh, could be produced, of course, taking advantage of this uh, incredible um, uh, generation portfolio that has uh, Kenya. And uh, now coming from from GMF, I mean, we, we have right now three, well, two drilling programs that have been finished already um, by GDC drilling programs within our program right now. So there will be two more power generation projects at least coming up and there will be even coming more because it's the, the public developer um, GDC that of course is, was established, let's say, by the government to do exactly that, to develop these particular GSM projects and there are even private companies also in, in Kenya active trying um, yeah, to, to realize this project. But I think this is really a success story and that gives also Kenya really um, the, the position uh, and responsibility to be the forerunner in this continent um, because they just show what could be or what, what happens if this GSM potential uh, becomes untapped. Yeah, jumping over a little bit to the um, to the heat. Um, so of course, uh, I expanded already that these power projects, this project pipeline that I just showed, um, elaborate over the time quite quite well. And uh, but the thing was always that we we received also in the application process uh, applications 
that were not targeting any power generation or we just saw from the resources that probably this will be not possible, uh, just too low in temperature, etc. So these were just I had to be rejected, for example, but we always got in contact, of course, with the developers for their, uh, their ideas. So this was, let's say, um, some years ago, the start for the discussion to amply the complete program to chairman of heat. Um, and here you see some pictures from uh, Kenya, from the GDC uh, testing center. So they established really kind of on a research level, a testing center to see and how, to, how it works. Let's say you see here fish ponds, you see the the greenhouses, you see a crop trying a trier, how they could combine it with geothermal, how stable it works, uh, what about the cost, etc. So they have done a great job because this potential, so for direct use, is even more untapped in East Africa. And this was another reason, as you can see here, three applications that refer to food. And this, of course, also now for the donors. And the money comes uh, mainly from EU Africa. Trust Fund and from uh, VMZ. Um, Alex, you mentioned that World Bank is involved. That's not the case. The financial part comes from the KFW, from German Development Bank. But uh, for, for them, it's just always important that any program, let's say, and above all, no, of course, also energy programs contribute to food security. And this was kind of a really a buzzword for us, uh, where we also could convince them to start all over with a new application round one heat. And, um, and why, why this is so uh, important? I think the Lindahl diagram, this is shown 100 times in, in all conferences for a quite long time, but this is really essential also for, for Africa. Um, because it's not like that, and I just would jump back maybe just, if you see the crop trier, I think this is really one of the key uh, uses for for direct use um, in in Kenya or in, in East Africa. Why? Because you have to you have maize as one of the basic foods there or crops there, and these crops have to be dried. Otherwise, they they can uh, develop certain uh, you say um, like like it's it's not mushroom the word. I think it's like uh, uh, don't call it. You know what I mean. So they can have. That development and only if you really dry that crops you can store it so this is a direct contribution if we have crop dryer uh, running with with geothermal just jumping back if this runs with geothermal it needs a very very low amount of energy just for the for the ventilation but the heat itself to dry the grain um, comes from geothermal so it really makes a perfect match and uh, so this really contributes Besides probably the fish ponds that we have seen, besides of course the greenhouses where to a certain extent um, the, the productivity could be increased. But I think um, this is uh, the, the crop trying, this will really will be one thing uh, besides other things. Um, but one more thing of course would be beer wine production, everything that comes with styry, with pasteurization, et cetera, also so with milk products, et cetera. And it could even be, and I'm, I'm very confident because Africans are very creative. If we can have there even cascade use or something, it could be even thought further. And uh, some of the projects that we have seen also really have in mind not only something is now different. I hope you can still see the person. It jumped back by itself. Just let me jump back. I was here. Yeah. Just move with the audio. Yeah. So um, I will speak about the particular project. So um, the idea of some projects is not only to have one application, but to create, let's say, kind of industrial zones or something like that. I would not call it industrial. It could be already something to have one centralized, um, uh, shall I say, uh, business, let's say, to, to do that crop trying or to offer that even from state because it's really crucial and it could reduce losses uh, in crops and uh, of course support a lot this, this food sector. And this combination, I mean, it's well known now over the uh, Geosummit community, but this combination now in, in Africa really is uh, quite important. 
so I'm, I'm quite happy um, to show you now, and I think you're the first ones in public because the awarding letters were sent out yesterday night, uh, even the press release didn't make it on the Think to Summer platform yet, but it will be um, released probably today. Uh, so the first five projects now in the direct heat um, have received funding um, for the surface study and you can see where they are allocated. So we have one project now in Rwanda, um, two in Tanzania and two in Kenya. And what these projects are behind or what is behind there. So you can see here Meningai West, so it's GDC, the public developer that exactly have in mind uh, grain drying, what I just explained. He did agriculture, milk pasteurization, what they did already in the in this training center. But of course now with, uh, with this project, they will really put it on a commercial level and have a centralized system for crop drying with several crop dryers probably, and uh, at a position where the farmers can bring it and from there on, on let's say, uh, the, the, they will, the, there will be the transfer to the particular markets. Uh, the project uh, Giseni in Rwanda, again, crop drying, fish drying, malting, brewery processes. So they have uh, uh, several, they, they are also thinking about having one particular business center, let's say, and now develop basing then on this uh, geothermal heat. Um, Elementaita, Mumbi, Kenya, complete different thing I never expected then, but they, they are thinking about a silkworm production where they also need heat. And uh, they also think about establishing a spa at the site, but these are two processes which show already how this cascade use and temperatures could, uh, could work. And uh, one project, um, maybe it's Manyara, just jumping down to the last one in Tanzania which will be again crop trying in combination with maybe a kind of tears on the spa. And one project which really stands a little bit out is uh, Serengeti Brewery. So Serengeti Brewery is really a very large multinational or international player um, from uh, Great Britain. So the, the company is Diageo, Diageo uh, Great Britain Limited. Uh, the project is located in Tanzania and they want to substitute fossil fuels in their brewery processes. And this really would be for Africa, really a pioneering project. And it just shows what, of course, geothermal can provide. Yeah? And uh, there I'm really crossing finger that it works out now with the first surface study and uh, the feasibility study that this shows a feasible project, because if we could establish in, in Africa the first Kind of industrial process substitution by geothermal direct use this really would be great and would be a good story of course not only for africa probably for all the world because this combination is very seldom seldomly uh, thought about so the funding maybe now getting a little bit to the basics uh, what we are speaking about so i spoke already about the the objectives and what gmf offers so we do a lot of information also a certain capacity building. We are quite close to the developers with face-to-face -face meetings. Um, we try to support them also in the application process, but finally what we offer is funding for surface studies and funding for drilling programs, what we have seen already in the map and from the program results. Um, the, the whole program from the beginning, like I explained already, I think was uh, established as to catalyst or to incentivize, of course, the development of the geothermal market there. And what we cover up, um, next question usually comes when we speak about funding, is uh, that we uh, fund the surface study by grants up to 80% of the eligible costs, uh, which is quite high. Why? Because um, when the program was designed, the idea was exactly to get these project ideas where there is some manifestation geothermal innovation where a geologist probably just realized that there could be a potential project that they really get this uh, first hurdle, get over the first hurdle, let's say, to, uh, of the findings for the survey study. And this is why we uh, really cover up to, up to 80%, which just, of course, showed up also in this number of projects. Uh, some of these projects, I might say, we, we designed the program with an easy way for projects that have received already funding for surface study. So whenever they are ready without an application round and they had already the surface study financed, 
they can have a direct drilling application. That means they can right away go to the drilling program. The drilling program, yeah, finances up to 40%. It's another time, it's a grant that we that we give for the drilling program. The drilling program can be up to three full-size production wells. Um, how these three wells, two wells, or a slim well with two full-size, et cetera, how these programs are designed, this depends totally, um, or is, uh, is on developer side, we don't have influence here. Normally, um, what we see is, I think the majority always goes for the three full-size wells. Yeah, and we cover up uh, to 40% of the eligible costs. I may say, I will mention the website later, um, you find it on gmf-eastafrica.org. There is the developer manual also, um, what you can have a look at. So what is the eligible activities, eligible costs, et cetera, for much more details. We also support the projects in the infrastructure upgrades. And uh, this already also for the survey study, because sometimes there is not even a road. So there could be the case that a gravel road has to be built. And for the drilling, what is the most challenging um, issue is usually water, yeah, to bring the water to the uh, drilling sites. So if there has to be something installed, a pond uh, or a site, the gravel road, some uh, casing, whatever, then this, this is also financed by a 20% share. Um, for the, here now mentioned for the GMF power, we have the continuation premium. So this is an um, additional funding instrument which just shall support the, the projects with three uh, successful uh, full-size um, wells already with certain aspects like maybe um, a wellhead generator, maybe with a feasibility study coming in. There's a double cap that, that applies here, so it's not totally open. It's assessed up to 30% of approved costs. So this was clearly defined. Usually it's a kind of 30% of the uh, developer's shares from the drilling program, for example, and 30% uh, of the approved costs for the particular activity here. But these four, staying now with power, these four elements, let's say, are always grant-based, what of course is, uh, I think, great, and it just shows the interest that this market shall develop and really just push the projects to get into these uh, drilling stages from the beginning. For the GMF heat, as we have the first application round, um, the, the donors so far were only, um, yeah, they were only willing to have a kind of trial application round. So um, we, we have allocated a certain amount here. So we started now with this first part of surface study because it was not really clear how many projects we will see, are these projects really of that quality that we want to see. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so as you just have seen, we have five projects qualified now for the further um, grant uh, uh, funding. And so we concentrated on surface study and infrastructure. About the drilling program here, yeah, in uh, about three weeks, there will be an oversight committee meeting. Of course, we have that in mind uh, to proceed also for the GMF heat projects there. Um, in three weeks, we have an oversight committee meeting where we have to decide on that with the donors and with the African Union Commission if this will be um, established uh, during this year, probably. So unfortunately, I cannot um, tell you the decision yet, as there will be the um, discussion in three weeks. Um, for the application process, I think it's um, quite similar to also other programs. So we have a two-stage progress, um, uh, two-stage progress. It's uh, expression of interest first of all, which gives us a rough idea about the project, and then there has to be handed in. If you make it over the first threshold, there's a, a 100 point evaluation, you have to make it over the 70 points, and then you can get to the second stage, uh, which means that you uh, apply for the application. If you do that, then you get the awarding letter, you get into the project pipeline, and then it depends uh, usually how long it takes to have all the formalities in place for the grant contract to proceed then to implementation and all the projects are monitored um, by us from the very beginning till the end because there are certain milestones that have to be achieved to receive the particular funding. Um, also, the application stage depends on a, a certain point uh, scheme, so 100-point scheme, where we evaluate really geo 
logical, geotechnical. So, for example, aspects like um, geology, so the resource itself is valued. Um, the drilling program, how good it matches with the particular resource, um, the staffing, the qualification of the staffing, for example. And of course, uh, from, from our side, we um, look at the licensing, the permitting processes, is everything like that in place. So we are running, from my perspective, a certain due diligence, let's say, on the projects, because finally, of course, it's donors' money to be spent in projects. So a lot of things have to be in place, and this sometimes also makes it quite odd. It's probably one issue why the project um, takes some time or quite a time and sometimes to really proceed to prime contract signing because all these things have to be in place. But uh, like we just uh, said before, a lot of projects have made it already. Um, now coming to my conclusion, maybe after um, yeah, 10 years uh, almost, so we we definitely achieved this this very basic objective, yeah, to to incentivize the market development in East Africa. Uh, GMF showed substantial impact. We we see the project pipeline now with 30 projects that have been. I mean, there was nothing before. There are no projects from public and private developers, and so we we can tickle that particular issue. Um, of course, there are always reasons uh, for delays in project development. So there are now some projects that really, uh, and, and there's very few, one or two, I think they finally rejected the grant because they could not see any chance to proceed in project development. What are the issues? Regulatory issues, for example. So licensing coming from mining authorities or from energy ministries or also behind that regulatory issues there could be a change in the political uh, sphere what i mean is if for example it's clearly that there there should not be independent power producers in a country then there could be limitations uh, in these countries for the private ones and that means for example that they will struggle very hardly with licensing on and with the second very important aspect the ppa so for the power um if there is not a PPA, it will be very, very tricky, of course. And finally, it's not a business case. Yeah, no private developer will go in there. So there are some countries where this is can be seen, but they are changing from time to time. Uh, even so, with new minister, there could be a complete new idea. Um, so far, I think it's in, in the overall picture, it's uh, a progress that we see in the right direction. Um, in my opinion, there should be more PPP. Um, approaches uh, there because you have good international private developers that probably could uh, team up of course with the public ones and then just see much faster project development and the need for power is is there besides maybe kenya but even there if we think about the other countries um and going up to the north um to to Djibouti, for example to ethiopia there's definitely need for power and power is the base for for development and this power of course has to be green these days to uh, allow the, the leapfrogging for these East Africa companies. GMF Heat, yes, this was really, uh, we were very curious how this will work out and, uh, but we are really quite happy now and very pleased now with these uh, results that we have the first project out and that we really can contribute also to food security and uh, like I just said, the training program also is being discussed already. This really will be, I hope so, yeah, I hope so. And uh, But this really can really untap this enormous, enormous potential because you have to, you, you need these showcases, you need these lighthouse projects um, like the brewery, what I mentioned before. If we can achieve that in one, there will maybe other industries that just come up and think about it. Hey, what, Chiasomble, what is that, you know? You have to show that this works and that it works uh, without problem. And of course, we have heat uses or direct heat uh, in Iceland, in Germany, in a lot of countries, above all in the district heating. But I think there is still such a large sector and such a, a large potential of possibilities to to uh, apply um, direct use applications that this is really in a great potential and could will be hopefully a good story, not only for Africa, but even showing um, these these cases 
to the rest of the world. Well, next steps for us to come. Um, the internal uh, name, let's say, is Shirmaf 2.0. It exists so far as a project. Internally, we are working on that. So the thing is, okay, we've got the heat, we've got the uh, we've got the power, of course, as a long established program. The question is, how far can we get? What can we do further? We are, uh, like I mentioned, uh, also, let's say, every from time to time in conferences, we're always in direct conversations with the developers. There are uh, popping a lot, a lot of ideas. I mean, finally, it's uh, the basic idea, give us money and we will develop, but it's not that easy if you deal with, uh, finally, with taxpayers' money from Europe or Germany or any other donor. So it's not that easy, but we have quite um, ideas to, to establish GMF a little bit further as a, a, a real player, let's say, to bring the projects not only from the first stages, but maybe get these projects even to the final application, to the investment and, for example, in power, whatever. There are ideas there, uh, ideas there. Unfortunately, I cannot speak about that because it's still internal, but I can at least say we are working it and probably there will be something coming up. Yeah, thank you so mar far. Um, this is my team. We're working on um, on this project. I think I missed to mention that we are in cooperation with Manvit uh, from, from Iceland. Manvit changed now the name to Kobi, so they are our geotechnical partners there, above all for this evaluation of the application and all um, uh, technical issues and with ERM for um, environmental and social aspects, which also can be quite an obstacle to proceed with the project. And so far, um, I think I finished. I'm, Please to, to to receive your questions. Back to Alex. Uh, Kai, thank you so much. Can you just give one slide, slide back? Um, but uh, for, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. Of course, the GRMF program is, is a very uh, important program for um, uh, for Africa uh, that also showcases kind of how the support for uh, Geothermal project development is quite crucial, particularly in the early stages. And to see, let's say, the uh, the long breath that KFW has shown uh, here in uh, in supporting Africa and its geothermal journey is quite remarkable. And and of course, the work of Wirtle and Manbit or now Kobe uh, is quite important. So thanks thanks for the update, and of course, congratulations uh, to the companies now uh, receiving this uh, funding. I think that this mm -hmm. is really good, um, and and of course, we hope to see, let's say, also more of the pro of the power project that have been funded by KFW to kind of come through with uh, with, with megawatts online. Yes. Uh, that, in that context, on the heat side of things, um, it, it is direct use, of course, is, is very interesting. And these, these projects are super, super interesting in a sense of what can be done. Uh, you mentioned the, the drilling program. Uh, I mean, as, as in the overview that you showed, and you could maybe kind of go back in your slides uh, to show that mm -hmm. overview where you could get the power versus uh, direct use. Uh, mm -hmm. Clearly, here for heat, the, the idea between the heat project was that as an add-on to power projects, and then the, ex, the extra use of, of that heat for direct use, or do you see this also the opportunity of, of separate projects? It's yeah, it's separate projects. So the five projects that we have received are not in combination uh, with power projects, because I mean, still as a program, we are doing surface study and drillings. Of course, if you have a power project, then to to use let's say a certain amount of energy after the power project, uh, after the power pro uh, generation, I mean, this is kind of if there is the possibility, we assume that power projects anyway should could should do it or could do it also um for the benefit of the of the nearby communities so the gmf heat program from from our side was really created as one completely new uh, program to really support surface study and yeah probably it will be decided in three weeks um drillings uh for for the establishment of these direct use applications yeah, and of course that that makes it quite 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 important, you know, the drilling drilling part. Uh, another yeah. question, yeah, uh, another question with regards to uh, heat. In the context of Africa, uh, of course, heat maybe kind of 
people kind of have a hard time to understand it. But of course, there is a heat demand for certain aspects uh, mm -hmm. and industrial applications. But would cooling also be something that could be part of the direct use aspect under the heat yes. program? Yes, uh, absolutely. So um, I think I, I can also jump back a little bit and elaborate a lot of, a little bit further. I think it was here. I mean, the Lindahl program is, is quite well known. Um, we have seen above all this, I talked a lot about the food security. I think this is clear. Also, greenhouses and greenhouses, not so much heating, it's much more uh, drying Yeah, to, to lower the, the humidity in the greenhouses. And yes, we have seen also one aspect that uh, cooling with Geosama was also within one application uh, by using absorption uh, heat pump systems. This, of course, is, is also an option. Finally, it's always the location that you, I mean, it's it's not only, um, I mean, like, like the brewery, like I mentioned, I mean, there we really have the brewery and on the same uh, real estate, let's say, we've got the Geosama potential. So perfect match. Yeah, if you think about cooling, it, it's similar. Yeah, I mean, you you need something like large storehouses or something where you see, okay, here we need cooling. But then now is the question: where is the storehouse, and where is the geothermal potential for that? And these are exactly the things that have to come together, and why probably also GMF good because the people have to think about and learn uh, by such webinars, of course, about the potentials and get these things together so that we have finally a project. Yes, and. To answer your question clearly, yes, we had one application also uh, where cooling was exactly one of the issues. So there it was greenhouses and uh, with greenhouses also coming with cooling and the cooling also for the crops. Okay, <clears throat> and now trickling some of the questions in, particular here. Uh, Jack, thank you for your great question. Uh, so I just read this as the question came here based on the proposals that you received for the heat program. Could you yeah. comment on what are the main types of direct use applications for the East African stakeholders that you have been considering? Yeah, I think I can jump back to the results and you can see it here. So the main issues were grain drying, crop drying. Um, the silkworm production is probably really a little bit more um, exclusive, let's say. Rubber processes, so we are again, we are in the foods, you know, being German, I mean, Beer is food, yeah, nothing else. So it's also uh, could be could or will contribute to food production, yeah. And here again, you see crop drying. So this this thing is really just tackling one of of a large uh, problem or challenge, let's say, that we see, of course, in in East Africa. Uh, above all, with the, the implications uh, from from climate change, you know, they are quite long, um, very heavy or very hard droughts that have been seen in Kenya. So everything that contributes to this food sector, I think this uh, this for for Africa really is the, the, the key um, applications. Okay, we, we only have about five minutes left. So I'll just kind of mm -hmm. jump right into it here. Uh, are you able to comment at a high level what you think are key barriers for direct use uh, development, particularly in the three countries that you have in short yeah. listing for the heat funding? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, we, we did two questions. First of all, we spoke to all our developers before and um, it results, one thing is what I just said. So you have maybe a kind of GSM manifestations where you see something, but there must be someone with the knowledge, with the perspective to see that there is a chance. There is a very nice uh, example. I think it was also in Kenya. Um, they, they drilled for gas um, 30 years ago and the gas, yeah, it was unsuccessful, but they just left the, the gas well untapped. But what happened, steam came out, you know? So suddenly somewhere in the country yard, uh, there was a hole, it was open, yeah? And it was just coming out steam. And what the people there just said, it, uh, or what they did is like, hey, this we can use somehow. And what they did, they started to uh, to agriculture with pyrethrum. Pyrethrum is an in pesticide or something like that, a natural one. And they used the steam, but really in a very simple way, they just brought it into a little house and there they put these leaves uh, on top so they could dry it. Again, it was dry because to dry it means to be able to transport it. Yeah. 
So um, I think at the beginning there, there should be this, this, this first idea, and this is already the first challenge, that somebody must have this, this idea. Then secondly, of course, if you have such communities, they don't have the ability, neither financially nor from, from the knowledge, from engineering, etc., to develop such uh, programs. I mean, GMF can be now a help, and as we can see now here, it's GDC, it's public, yeah. Um, Mumbi is, uh, is private. Uh, here we have the large multinational company behind, and the other ones are pub, uh, public developers. So GDC, EDCL, and TGDC. I think in these countries, yes, these public developers uh, could play a very important role because they could take up exactly these project ideas from the beginning and then start elaborating it. And what we included also, maybe another issue is the business case, the business case, the business case. So we included in the surface study financing here also that they don't have to bring us only uh, a surface study, but they have to bring us a feasibility study. That means that we really see an economic uh, benefit, an economic output, if we now finance to a certain share these uh, drillings, this project becomes uh, realized that it's really self-sustaining it over a certain period and that we see a kind of business case that it's feasible. So it's not only to, to spread out the, the news about you, some direct use or something like that, but what we really want to see is economic projects. And now you can see, finally, we speak about a professional approach to geothermal project development. And uh, this, of course, needs certain qualifications. What I just said, it needs money, and it needs money for the first stages for the development. And finally, of course, also for the money for the implementation, investment, let's say, into the geothermal, and then for the particular application that you need before, and need uh, finally. And these all together, of course, makes it quite a challenge now in countries like we have seen before in East Africa. Okay. Uh, if you could maybe kind of switch to the very last slide, but I still have like two questions that I'm trying to combine here in the quickest way. Uh, so maybe very, very short answer. Uh, the question on the progress of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the sense of, on the website of the, of the GMF program, do you find information on the progress of these projects? And, uh, and have there projects that have moved to the to the phase of production drilling yet? Um, production drilling, yes, we have finished four programs already um, with production, so completely finished drilling programs. There are now two or three, I would say, pretty close for 24. Um, we had kind of seven surface study already established and some even um, yeah, made the progress then to the second stage, so it's for the drilling program. Um, the very particular progress in these projects is not communicated because it's uh, treated to be confidential and what challenges these particular projects see and have. So this is not published on the website. Okay. Uh, and here's, of course, the comment further on a potential uh, drilling risk insurance or resource risk insurance. Uh, and the question if KFW could, could work together with private partner to, to prevent the possibility for drilling. I think I'll, I'll leave that not for a comment, just as a, as a, as a note here. Uh, and then again, you know, the question with regards to um, uh, with regards to how much has evolved uh, in the development, but I think most of that is information that can be found in the reports on the GRMF website. Uh, with that, exactly. uh, I think uh, I have to cut uh, the, the webinar short uh, this time and point out to the IGC and Best Geothermal event uh, taking place in June of this year. An event by by Enerchange uh, with an involvement of Think Energy uh, on geothermal finance and investment. Uh, please join uh, us there. Uh, but in the meantime, Kai, I would like to thank you very much, you and Virtual Partner, for your work, and of course, Manvit and Kovi. Uh, wish you all a great weekend, and thanks so much for joining us and join us again in the next webinar. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. Thank you, Alex. And for any question, of course, just get in contact with us on the website from GMF. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.